This video will be a continuation of our series on the spinal cord and this video is going to cover our medial pathways which include our tectospinal, reticulospinal, and vestibulospinal pathways. All of these pathways are going to begin with upper motor neurons in our somatomotor cortex. The difference between our corticospinal pathways and our medial pathways are whether or not this movement is voluntary or under conscious control. Our medial pathways, on the other hand, are going to control involuntary or reflexive movements. So we may be using the same upper motor neurons, but it's initiated for a different reason. Here again, we are looking at our spinal cord with our upper motor neuron cell bodies located in our somatomotor cortex. Our lower motor neuron cell bodies are going to be in our anterior gray horn. So we are going to be looking at our tectospinal, reticulospinal, and our vestibulospinal tracts. Now you may wonder why you're looking at an ear in this picture. Well, I wanted to show you that information coming in over our vestibulocochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve 8, is going to come in and we're going to incorporate some hearing information and we're going to incorporate some balance information and that information comes in to the area of our pons and medulla oblongata. This information is then carried to our tectum. Do you guys remember our tectum? Our tectum is our corpora quadrigemina. Remember our corpora quadrigemina are these four bodies on the posterior side of our mesencephalon. So we had our superior colliculi and our superior colliculus was going to be in charge of uh, movements of our head and neck in response to visual stimuli. So we talked about our gaze centers in our reticular formation that allowed us to track objects or we talked about those visual orientation reflexes. That's what's going on with our superior colliculus. Our inferior colliculus was going to do movements of the head and neck in response to auditory stimuli. So guess what we're doing with our tectospinal tracts? We are going to control reflexive movements of the head in response to sight and sound. So our ultimate destination are going to be those muscles that control head position like our trapezius and our sternocleidomastoid. So our tectospinal tracts relate back to our tectum, which is our corpora quadrigemina. Our reticulospinal tracts, you guessed it, have something to do with our reticular formation in our brainstem and these pathways are going to carry commands to maintain posture and balance. So these commands are going to go out to the muscles of the trunk, our upper limbs, and our lower limbs to maintain our posture on a regular basis. Our vestibulospinal tracts located here are going to begin in our vestibular nucleus of our brainstem and that's where we get the name from and they are similar to our reticulospinal tracts in that we're going to be using these tracts to maintain balance. 
The difference is that our vestibulospinal tracts are going to induce our limbs to straighten in response to body tilting. So our reticulospinal tracts are going to help maintain our posture and balance, and our vestibulospinal tracts take over when we start to fall over. So we are also going to maintain balance here, but it's more like keeping yourself from falling after you have started to lose your balance. Our vestibulospinal tracts are also going to control head position. So there we have our tectospinal, reticulospinal, and vestibulospinal tracts all three of which together make up our medial pathways. So as a review, we have these medial pathways and also listed on here are our lateral pathways. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.